When the Emperor died at Endor and the Empire began to fracture, few would have as big an impact as Warlord Zinj, who at his peak controlled more of the former Imperial territory than anyone else. And today we're going to be talking about the rise and fall of that Empire and showing how it progressed on the map. Prior to taking the title of Warlord, Zinj had served in both the military and political branches of the Empire. He was likely born on the massive shipyard world of Fondor, and from there he worked under his mother in the Clone Wars, Admiral Marissa Zinj, until he was put in charge of hunting her down after she denounced Palpatine's new government. Zinj continued to flex this ruthless side and moved up the ranks, transitioning eventually from the position of High Admiral to the position of Grand Moff of the Quelly Oversector, which would become the core of his personal empire after Palpatine's death. While Zinj and his forces would engage in occasional skirmishes with neighboring warlords like Artis Kane's Pentastar alignment and the Greater Maldrude, led by Trey and Teradoc, he avoided conflict with the rebels in the first years after Endor, or in 4 ABY, for two main reasons. One was that he was just farther away from the core fleets of the rebel and New Republic military, which were concentrated on heading from the Galactic South into the core for their eventual seizure of Coruscant. And the second was that in the early days when rebel information was more limited, Zinj sent emissaries from his world to the rebels' so-called Galactic Caucus, seemingly an early version of the Senate, but also a weird thing only mentioned in the often strange source book Kraken's Threat Dossier. These emissaries working on Zinj's behalf would try to present their worlds as being free of Imperial influence, downplaying Zinj's threat, though this tactic was less successful as the New Republic learned more about the actual state of the galaxy. Zinj did hold a particular grudge against Teradoc and the Greater Maldrood, considering that Teradoc had begun the Greater Maldrood by taking away part of Zinj's former fleet, an armada of pink-holed Victory Star Destroyers called Crimson Command. At its height, about three years after Endor, so we are jumping ahead a little bit right now, Zinj controlled territory along the Hydean Way from the corporate sector in the north, down past Mandalorian space, and nearly into the core at Jasbina, Kidrif, and Bogdan in the south. This growth had been accomplished through a mix of standard Imperial tech, as well as the use of a new type of loyal and specially equipped soldiers, the Raptor Troopers, along with the unique starfighter, the TIE Raptor. Each of these became feared on thousands of worlds as Zinj had used them to keep local, allegedly elected rulers in line. The Raptor Trooper program, mostly comprised of former naval marines, had been developed and headed by Zinj's second-in-command, General Melvar who'd been part of Imperial Intelligence's destabilization or destab teams, already a brutal group, where he'd been deemed too vicious. He was so vicious he didn't even like this video, let alone subscribe for more. I'd really appreciate it if you did both of those things, though, as we try to hit 50,000 subscribers, so thanks to everyone who's done that so far. Some of the initial conflict between Zinj and the New Republic came when the Mon Calamari hoped to push back some local Imperial forces near their space, with forces under the command of Admirals Namo and Kalbeck striking from Mount Calamari and Haas to Emmer, Makam T, and other Imperial worlds in the region, then patrolling Zinj and Teradoc's eastern border. Any hope of a prolonged campaign was prevented by an attack on their secret shipyards at Haast, which had become less secret and put multiple ships out of commission through either damage or delayed refurbishment, including a pair of captured Star Destroyers. This attack had been undertaken by Admiral Lon Bangir, a Zinj ally, although he was still nominally loyal to the ruling council. Because remember, this was a period where there weren't really hard lines between a lot of these groups. There were a lot of shifting loyalties. Pressure soon began to build up against Zinj more from the other side, as the New Republic moved north throughout 4 and 5 ABY on their road to Coruscant. Elements of the Second Fleet, led by Admiral Kalbach, moved in 5 ABY from a successful, albeit costly, effort to prevent further expansion beyond Tagoria by the Great Omeldrude, and attacked Zinj at Corson. This attack was repelled by Zinj himself and the Iron Fist, pushing Kalbach along the Hydean Way towards the core for a final defeat of the New Republic at Pequalis. This push expanded Zinj's territory to its greatest western extent. The subsequent appearance of Lord Shadowspawn in the Mindor campaign, along with the liberation of Coruscant, kept Zinj out of the limelight for the next year, during which time he managed to subjugate the corporate sector and push back even further towards Mon Calamari, taking the entire Tion hegemony and managing to attack New Alderaan, the new homeworld of many Alderanian refugees after the destruction of Alderaan itself. With Coruscant now in hand for the New Republic, the military determined Zinj to be their next greatest threat, causing the famous Rogue Squadron to resign their commissions in order to continue the fight against Isan Isard, who had fled the planet in a buried Super Star Destroyer, Lusankia, and set up shop on Borlaeus, 
from where she controlled the flow of the all-important, all-purpose medical crop Bacta. Zinj actually aided Isard a bit in this campaign, acting on her information to ambush Rogue Squadron in the asteroid field formerly known as Alderaan, now called the Graveyard, while they awaited a convoy transporting Bacta. Zinj managed to destroy the convoy, solidifying himself as the New Republic's primary target, leading to the creation of a fleet under the command of General Han Solo, aimed at eliminating Zinj once and for all. The core of this fleet were three groups under Han Solo's command, with each having at least two capital ships and two smaller escorts. The first group included Han's flagship Mon Ramonda, a new MC-80B class ship, and was joined by the MC-80 Mon Karen, the Nebulon B Tedivium, and the Marauder Etherhawk. In the second group, the ISD-2 Skyhook and MC-80 Monda Linda were escorted by the Quasar Battle Dog and the Nebulon B Warder. In the final group, a pair of Star Destroyers, Crinid and Allegiance, were escorted by the CR-90 Ession Strike and the Nebulon B Void Runner. One of the first animated videos I actually did on this channel was a breakdown of Solo Command. Another unit was also formed during the fight to take on Warlord Zinj, under the command of former Rogue Squadron leader Wedge Antilles. This new squadron, known as Wraith Squadron, was meant to be a covert team, capable of both starfighter combat and commando operations. It was made up of some of the most expendable pilots the New Republic had to offer. Their training at Fuller Base on the eponymous moon of Commonor was interrupted by Admiral Apwar Trigit, one of the admirals working for Warlord Zinj. The operations of Zinj were often associated with strange technological projects being developed, and the discovery of Fuller Base was the result of one such project. Project Mort led to the creation of parasite droids, which would attach themselves to ships and map traffic patterns, which would then be used to determine the location of military bases or other helpful intel. Fuller Base was lost, however the tactics of Wraith Squadron, including impersonating the Millennium Falcon, allowed them to pull apart and defeat the starfighters of Trigit's flagship, the ISD Implacable, buying time for the base to evacuate with very few casualties and a high cost to the Empire. After leaving Fuller, Wraith Squadron was able to ambush and capture Implacable's escort corvette, the Nightcaller, which was a member of a modified CR-90 subclass at Jobom 6. They renamed the ship to the Ession Strike and turned it into their own base of operations, and going through the ship's records also allowed them to discover the details of Project Mort and their prior expulsion from Fuller through the ship's records. The parasite tactics of attaching smaller ships to larger ones would actually become very important later on in the campaign, and the Millennium Falsehood strategy is going to play an important role later as well. On top of his love of weird experiments, Zinj also enlisted the help of pirates on a variety of occasions. As Ray Squadron continued their operations through his territory, taking them through targets like Halmad, Storinol, and Lavasar, they were able to pose as a pirate group and make their way into his service, under the name the Hawkbats. Zinj's next major plan was set to make his already considerable naval power even stronger. His target wasn't in the New Republic, but instead the Imperial shipyards at Kuat, where the Razor's Kiss, another Executor-class Star Dreadnought, was under construction. Some of the pirates, including Wraith pilot Shala Nelprin, flew into the system aboard a disguised Lambda shuttle, and began uploading a program devised by General Melvar onto the ship, along with a second program made by another former Wraith pilot, Kasten Dawn, which Nelprin snuck in as well. This program would transmit the location of the ship to the New Republic, and it was developed by Dawn before his death, hoping to use it to track the Iron Fist itself. Melvar's program began the process of Razor's Kiss targeting its connections to the shipyard, and moving the ship towards a safe jump point. After Razor's Kiss had wreaked havoc on the station it was connected to, and begun its movement towards the jump point, Iron Fist jumped into the system, and the rest of Zinj's forces, including the Pirates and Wraith Squadron, began engaging the other Kuat defenses to cover for Razor's Kiss's exit. Zinj was able to take the Razor's Kiss, escape with Iron Fist intact, and eliminate several of Kuat's defenders, including the ISD Mauler. Zinj's celebration of this massive victory was short-lived. As soon as he exited hyperspace at a nearby rally point, the tracker left by Nelprin, who had taken cover in a tie under the Bridge of the Razor's Kiss, began transmitting their coordinates, and Han Solo's flagship dropped on the unsuspecting Warlord's pair of Superstar Destroyers, preventing them from jumping to hyperspace and leading to one of the most lopsided battles in Star Wars. Shala was able to use her position to destroy the shield generators on the Razor's Kiss, which Zinj slaved to the controls of Iron Fist as it fell under assault by Wedge and the Mon Ramonda's fighter and bomber complement. Mon Ramonda itself continued to prevent an escape by Zinj by positioning itself in his way and using its powerful shields to sustain itself against the Iron Fist's more limited firing arcs. 
Iron Fist's ties slowly gained ground against Wedge's X-Wings, A-Wings, and B-Wings, but they were shortly joined by the Screaming Wookiee's Y-Wing squadron, which helped clear the enemy ties and redouble their attacks on the Razor's Kiss. Vord Sabinring, another Wraith pilot, had positioned himself on the Iron Fist in a similar way to Nelprin on the Razor's Kiss, mimicking the earlier parasite tracking that Zinch had done himself, allowing him to target some of Iron Fist's shield generators and drop their efficiency by half. Unwilling to trade his old dreadnought for the new one, Zinja abandoned Razor's Kiss and retreated, while the Razor's Kiss itself self-destructed. This gave the New Republic one of their biggest and possibly least believable victories. Despite this crushing defeat, Zinj had a new idea in mind, and he ordered his forces to return to the scene of the battle and recover as much of the Razor's Kiss's hull as possible, saying, quote, It's just a little exploded. It's still good. It's still good. A few days later, Han received a distress call from Levian II, a world just outside Zinj's territory, allowing Han's first battle group to engage Iron Fist directly, since apparently he needs more than one ship to fight our Super Star Destroyer now, like some kind of loser. Believing he may finally have a chance to end Zinj and Iron Fist's rampage, Han called his second battle group, only for Zinj to also reinforce with two more groups himself. Han was able to take out two of Zinj's cruisers in escape, much to the chagrin of Zinj, leaving his forces further weakened from the last few engagements with Han, along with the damage to his financial and scientific ventures, which had been suffered thanks to the covert efforts of Wraith Squadron. They continued to do this in a series of following operations, including one on Saphalor, where the Wraith shut down the experiments of Binring Biomedical, a company with ties to Zinj whose experiments had created beings like the hyper-intelligent Gamorrean Vortza Binring, aka Piggy, one of the Wraith's own pilots, meaning the mission had extra significance to him. Zinj and his raptors continued to target Imperial planets as much as the New Republics in his attempts to expand his territory, as was the case at Josephet IV. Wedge and Han received a distress signal from the Imperial-controlled world, and arrived hoping to catch some sign of Zinj's activity. They were successful at eliminating the attacking raptors, but during the battle, two of their Twi'lek pilots became victims of Project Funeral. In this project, Zinj had been able to brainwash many non-humans in the New Republic unknowingly into his service, allowing him to activate them as sleeper agents, to assassinate New Republic leaders, or to accomplish other goals, all in the hopes of stoking interspecies tensions. Taldira of Rogue Squadron and Neuro Tualan of Polearm Squadron were activated during the battle to try and kill Han and Wedge, but were killed themselves before they could either kill their targets or be otherwise subdued. The battle was otherwise a success, and most importantly, their response to help an Imperial world drew the attention of Imperial Admiral Terran Rogress, beginning an alliance between he and Han to at least loosely cooperate against Warlord Zinj. With this new cooperation in place, the New Republic began to push Zinj's territory back down the Hydean Way away from the core. Victories at Kidrif, Corsin, Noain, Null, and even the former Oversector capital of Terrace loosened Zinj's hold on much of his territory, and Han began setting a trap to lure Zinj into assaults against his fleet at the Vahaba Asteroid Belt. This began with Han's fleet intercepting a small task force of Zinj's, including just two dreadnoughts, a Victory Star Destroyer, and an Imperial Star Destroyer, which had been lured in with the promise of capturing once again the fake Millennium Falcon, thinking that they could get Han. This was tantalizing enough that Iron Fist soon appeared as well, and Han's fleet moved into position. This time they did so with the help of an Imperial Interdictor cruiser, the Stellar Web under the command of Admiral Rogress, a type of ship which could prevent hyperspace jumps by projecting a large gravity well. Since Stellar Web was the key to finally being able to defeat Zinj, Han protected it by flanking it with two of his Star Destroyers, Crynid and Allegiance. Realizing this trap could easily be the end of him, Zinj sent Serpent Smile, his VSD, and Red Gauntlet, his ISD, to destroy Stellar Web. Despite taking heavy fire on the way, Serpent Smile was able to get close enough to nearly ram Stellar Web. Progress waited as long as possible, but finally had to reverse its gravity well, repelling and destroying the Serpent Smile, unfortunately allowing Zinj to escape in the meantime. This failure to secure a final victory demoralized Han, although it did allow the capture of Red Gauntlet, and left Zinj's fleet greatly diminished. Sabotaged by Gera Petothal, an undercover Wraith pilot who is working against Zinj from within his organization, had removed data from the Iron Fist nav computer about the nearby planet Silagus, meaning when Iron Fist escaped Vahaba, it actually didn't get far. A message from Gera to Han encouraged his fleet to follow Zinj's damaged dreadnought into the system, which they did, however not before Zinj had time to prepare. Other elements of his forces had regrouped with Iron Fist, 
But most importantly, the asteroid ring of Salagus had been laced with mines, while the shoddily reconstructed hull of Razor's Kiss had been positioned within it, hidden by an orbital nightcloak. When Han's fleet arrived, it led to a chase for Iron Fist through the asteroid field, eventually destroying the obscured Razor's Kiss with some of the mines, now known as Second Death, while Iron Fist slipped away, convincing Han he had finally killed his nemesis and taken down Iron Fist. While these had all been significant losses for Zinj, his main seat of power remained on Dathomir, where he'd established an orbital facility called Rancor Base, still capable of producing new ships and maintaining his remaining fleet thanks to mineral deposits on one of the planet's moons, allowing for production of all-important durasteel. Luckily for everyone involved, Han ended up winning Dathomir in a game of Sabacc, and decided it would be a great place to take Leia to try to rekindle their relationship, after the Hapens, a matriarchal society of humans from the Insular Hapes Cluster, had arrived at Coruscant with a massive fleet of battle dragons and star destroyers, offering them and a new alliance with the New Republic in exchange for Princess Leia marrying their Prince Isolder. If this sounds a little weirdly disconnected from everything that had gone on before, it's because this was actually in a book that was released before any of the Wraith Squadron books, so it is a little bit disconnected. Dathomir was also home to two groups of four sensitive witches, the Evil Night Sisters and the Good Witches. The witches in this case, specifically the Singing Mountain Clan, refused to turn over Han to Zinj, who discovered his presence on the planet and threatened to wipe out the Night Sisters and witches with his orbital nightcloak network, a series of installations which he could use to block out the sun. The Night Sisters, on the other hand, were pretty on board with trying to capture him. Without getting too far into the personal stories and away from our animated campaign map, this turned into a battle between the Hapen fleet, aided by Han, Luke, Leia, and the witches on the ground, and Zinj's fleet, including Iron Fist ending in a victory for the Hapens and an alliance for the Hapens in New Republic. Although with Han and Leia marrying each other, and Isolder and one of the witches, Tenennial Joe, marrying as well. Zinja's death led to a multi-way dash to secure his territory by several factions, but that'll be the subject of our next campaign breakdown. For now, thank you for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you want to read more of the stories involved in this, aside from source books like The Essential Atlas and Essential Guide to Warfare, then you can check out the Wraith Squadron X-Wing books, so Wraith Squadron, Iron Fist, and Solo Command, as well as The Courtship of Princess Leia for the finale. But once again, if you've enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like or subscribing for more.